Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Angel here and I'm joined by the original bougie boy, Rich Stamboli. What's up? Rich is bad and bougie. Bad to the bone. Hey, didn't you used to have a breakdancing group called the KKK? I did. The Cool Kicking Kids? Yeah, that's what it was <laughs> in then, the 90s. And then it, it was just for one day. And it didn't then, go well. And people were like, you can't do that. It went, it, it, it did not go over well. Um, I did get called a bougie bitch by a stripper. When? Uh, yesterday. Really? Yeah. Did she know who you were? She knew who I was. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I was Did wearing my her? suit. I was wearing my suit. No, I just put her back in a cage. Is it in their contracts that the executives are allowed to smack them around? <laughs> not, not in our establishment. <laughs> not like, in our place. Our place is really... Actually, we're getting a lot of, um, a lot of uh, media coverage. Cool, man. Yeah. That's good. I, you guys are blowing up. I like that. I was going to I was gonna turn that picture of Dennis Ra- you and Dennis Rodman into a potato and Dennis Rodman. <laughs> so uh, you want to talk about the potato incident? Listen. Before yeah, we go is, into anything with wrestling. This is hysterical. Andrew has a great story. He just posted it on, uh, on Twitter the other day. And I really want to hear the rest of this. Okay. So I was debating how I was going to word this because it, it was <laughs> such a bizarre incident that it's hard to believe that it happened. Can I start painting the picture? Uh, yeah, you're Take, painting it. You're, you're, you're going to work. You're going to Sapphire. I'm on. So you're I'm on taking the LA double R. I'm on something called the Persian train. Okay. So it's the oh, first the great off next. peak. Yeah. The first mm-hmm. off peak train. Yeah. From Great Neck. Yeah. So that's from here. That's what? Like the 10. Oh, the, the 948. Right. Yeah. Okay. The 948 train. So I generally don't get on that one. I get on like the 927 mm-hmm. or 956 because it's like packed. It's the first train. Right, yeah, right. no, I, I just wanted to. Yeah. I just wanted to censor that. Um, so I sit down, <laughs> and this there's this old Persian dude, mm-hmm. sl- white hair, slick back. Mm-hmm. There's so much more to the story. I just couldn't elaborate. Mm-hmm. Um, he's slick back here. He's sitting across from. He's wearing this crazy checkered suit. Okay, so on the LA Double R, yeah. there's rows and rows and rows, and then there's seats that face each other. That, yeah, that was each it other. in the face each other seat. Yes, it was in the face each okay. other seat. Uh, which I never do. I always take right. the one seat. There's one secret seat on the Long Island Railroad where it's facing nothing, just the, just the window. Yeah. You know which one? It's like in that nook the where the conductor the, sits. Yeah, the, that, that's my favorite chair. Also. That's where I sit. Yeah. But sometimes, sometimes you get a guy that doesn't care and he sits next to you. Oof. And that is not fun. That's never happened to me. Oh, it's happened to me uh, twice. You're, you have a thinner frame than I do. Twice it's happened to me. Not pleasant. So I'm sitting down. I'm talking to this. Uh, I'm not even talking. I'm sitting down and the conductor <laughs> comes over. Uh-huh. And he grabs this guy's ticket. And they start a conversation. Okay. And he goes, ah. Uh, and he goes and shakes his hand. Like, he, a, like a conversation like they knew each other or okay. he just started talking? The, the guy him. got up and shook the conductor's hand. Okay. And showed him his ticket. Okay. And, like, he just shook his hand. And he sat back down and he was eating something with, like, bread. It was uh-huh. something weird. It was definitely something weird. Did it weird. smell good? I, I couldn't tell what it was. It was, like... It almost looked like what I asked rolled you. up <laughs> lachma juice. It, smelled, it looked ooh. like rolled up lachma juice. Did it smell good? It, I couldn't smell it. I love lachma. I had no idea what it was. And it was in like a really oily napkin, okay. like wrapped around it. Okay. So I'm just, I'm totally ignoring this guy, but mm-hmm. he looks ridiculous. Wearing a checkered white suit. Okay. Uh, slick back hair. And he goes up to me, I'm not even kidding you. He goes up to me and goes like this. I'm going to do it to you. Yeah, please. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and he goes... You're were a, you did, were you looking at him while he was no, doing this? No, I was you literally just I'm, like I was playing a game on my phone, tunnel vision. Yeah, and this dude just, just like does that. Your chin. Oh my so God. I go and he goes, "You're a very handsome man," Ooh, just yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I go, "Thank you." He uh-huh. goes, "Are you Persian?" Uh-huh. Or he, he goes first. He goes, "Are you Iranian?" I'm like, "No." He goes, "You're not Persian." I'm like, "No, I'm not Persian." Uh-huh. Uh huh. And you, you look go, like Holaden. Yeah. He goes. <laughs> <laughs> when I was young, I had beautiful beard like you, but now it's all white. Okay. Just like that, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a very good Persian, by you the do. way. You uh, do. He goes, now it's all white, so I always have to shave. I'm like, okay. So that was it, right? Okay, fine. It's weird to grab my face, but he's Persian. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I... <laughs> sure. Listen, if it was anybody, if it was like you doing it, mm-hmm. like, and I don't know you, it would be fighting, right? You would fight the guy. I, well, I mean, I'd try to stop it before he I'd got like, to my face. Yeah. <laughs> like one of those. So I, I'm so sorry, guys. I have to tell the story. Um, so far, so good. So far, so good. So he does that first. He's, I, I, 
I'm too early, dude. He didn't I don't go from engage. the beard. No, no, no. He just goes like this. To the, to the second just like beard, this. right? Yeah, just like that. <laughs> I, I couldn't go into the story because it's so ridiculous. Nobody would believe it. It'd be too long. Uh-huh. So he does that. And he goes, you're certain you're not Persian? Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to go into it with him. He yeah, knew. Yeah. He knew there was something there. Yeah, yeah. He just felt it. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not. And he goes, okay. It's the eyes. Three minutes go by. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at him. He takes, he had like a bag, like a little, like, uh, like a plastic bag. He takes something out. It's a fucking boiled potato. Is that right? Did it in have a foil plastic on bag. It? No, no, no. Just in a plastic bag, but like wet. Okay. A little wet. Takes it. Crushes it like this. In the bag. In the bag. Okay. I, I just, from the corner of my eye, just leaves it like that. Two minutes go by. I, he goes like this. Hands it to me. Oh, boy. I took it. He took it. it out of the bag. He took it out of the bag. Bare hands. Bare hands. Handed, Handed it, it, to. it to me. Okay. Was it dripping? I, no, no, it wasn't dripping. Okay. I don't know what came over me. I don't know why I accepted this potato, but I did. Uh-huh. And I looked at him, and I ate it. Just staring at him in the eyes. And he goes like this. All right. That was it. You're a drug mule now. <laughs> that potato is full of heroin. <laughs> that was it. I've come to collect. Where is my hair on? That was it. <laughs> he gave me a half of a boiled potato. Did you stare straight ahead after this, or did you engage him in conversation? I didn't want to make eye contact. Why'd you eat the potato? I don't know. It was. I he, he put it in your hand. Dude, you know what it was? He didn't feed I took, you. I took a magic bean in the morning. Uh, okay. Yeah. And I kind of was feeling loose. I want a little potato. I just didn't know. <laughs> I was really focused in. I accepted the. I, it was like one of these. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it wasn't, it wasn't like he fed it to you. No, that would have been even better. He just like put it in your hand, and you were like, "Potato time, USA." I, <laughs> I, I don't know, and I really felt guilty about eating that. Like I felt, Ugh. really, I, I got like really not a sense of guilt. Why saying like, "What the hell did I just do?" Why, Why would I eat the potato? I, I just felt really weird. I felt really weird about the whole potato incident. Did you feel disgusted with his? I want to find this man. Uh-huh. If you take the 949, 948 train out of Bayside. Well, that's a 1001 by me. It's a 1001 so, by you. Yeah. If you take that train and there is a Persian man mm-hmm. with white, white hair, no beard, uh-huh. and wearing a white checkered suit. You're describing half the train at that time. Go up and ask him why he gave me the potato. Mm-hmm. What does it mean? Why did you give Andrew that potato? <laughs> I feel different. I feel weird. Uh-huh. I'm going to tell you. I, I feel like a different person now. I see things a little bit differently. Uh- <laughs> I think I'm a little clairvoyant now. I, yeah, that potato is full of drugs. <laughs> a, <I> think- <laughs> a, that potato is full of drugs. B, again, on the next full moon, you're going to turn into an effing potato. I, I think I'm turning into a potato. Uh, there are times that I look in the mirror at night, and all I see is like spores. Happening on my mm-hmm. face? Uh, this was... <laughs> you mean eyes. They're called eyes. Uh, <laughs> I, I just cannot believe I ate the freaking potato. Damn, why'd you eat that potato? You know what? When I was a kid, my grandmother would make me a boiled potato every mm-hmm. day at 10 o'clock. I think okay. it was like a weird thing from my childhood. I just had to accept the potato. Okay. Pat Law. That's, that's Mike Phillips. Hmm. The up? great radio engineer and Thanks. my legal, legal advisor. Look at him. He wants me to get a better microphone. He wants he wants me to give you the TLM 103. He doesn't think I sound good on this. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a little insight. He hates that mic, and he doesn't think I sound good you on sound this. You sound like a, a man who ate a stranger's potato. I, <laughs> dude, how can I retell that story in 140 or 200 characters? I don't know. Impossible. Tater, tater man. I just have to keep it short, but it was a bizarre. The thumbs up was uh-huh. awesome. Can I redo the show intro and introduce you as Tater Man Andrew Tater Man Andrew Heron? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what it's going to be from now on. All right. L- l- now you got my potato story. I know a lot of people wanted to hear the potato story. Here it is. Uh, let's talk about pro wrestling. Put this potato story behind a paywall. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pay for this potato story. You know what? I should put this behind a paywall. There, there might be a little more to the story. I want to. Uh, he may have dropped his pants. If I fi- Oh, man. And by potato, I mean something else. If I find this guy, I don't, can I, I, want, I want to yell at him in like the Batman, the Christian Bale Batman voice. <laughs> He's going to give you his Persian Why magic. Why the potato? Dude, he did some weird Persian magic on me. Mm-hmm. I feel different. Oh, he looks like Aladdin. <laughs> He goes, he goes, he goes like this. He goes, you are a very handsome man. Are you Iranian? Yeah. I said, no, I'm not. He goes, no, you didn't even tell him your dad. No, I didn't even go into deep. Nothing. Wow. He goes, you're not Persian? Then I was young. I had beard like you. And then it went white. 
and I had to get rid of it. You know, you know what's funny? It's the eyes, definitely. The eyes. The eyes. The eyes yeah. and the eyelashes and the eyebrows yeah. are 100%. Yeah. It's very, uh, very, very I, I Mediterranean, like, you know, like that. You know. I, I look like every depiction of the Anunnaki. <laughs> <laughs> I look like yeah. every um, sculpture from the, the Mesopotamian era. That's true. It's every one of them is me. Very Byzantine. Very uh, Byzantine. So, so, like, if you had sunglasses on, he probably wouldn't have asked you. He would not have asked me. No. Yeah. I think if I wasn't wearing a suit, he wouldn't have asked me. Yeah. I think he was impressed. Yeah. I think he was very impressed. I used to play video game called the Prince of Persia. <laughs> you know and Prince of Persia? Your... <laughs> then, <laughs> you sure you're not Iranian? I don't There's do... video game about Iranian, about Persian. I don't do a very good Persian accent. I've heard it my whole life. Uh, guys, let's talk about pro wrestling. How about this? Let's do it, baby. Uh, before we all turn into magical Persian potatoes, I want to remind everybody, you can <laughs> fund us potato. on Patreon, patreon.com slash Podcast. Fund us there. Also, if you're watching live and you enjoy my potato Persian stories, you can hit that dollar <laughs> button in the chat and give us whatever you feel like, a dollar, two dollars, twenty dollars, five hundred dollars. For $500, I'll take my shirt off right now. Would you? I'll what, do the whole show shirt. Can we call you the Persian potato from now I want to be the Persian potato. What if somebody said? People, That'll be my finisher. I find it very odd sometimes that people send stuff to your house like they know where you live. Yeah. Do you think somebody's going to send you like a box of potatoes? If, if you send me a box of potatoes, I will eat all of them live on the air. Why would I? I just, I just bring them over. I wouldn't ship them. You want to bring a box of potatoes? <laughs> sure. Okay. What kind of potatoes do you like? you like some russet potatoes? You I like, like russet some... potatoes. I like the, uh, the little red ones. Russet. Russet? Yeah. They're not rustic? Not rustic. Russet? Russet. Those are the little red Russet ones. Russet potatoes. Yeah. Those are the red ones. <laughs> Russet. This is uh, potato talk. It is potato talk. All right. Let's talk wrestling. Yeah. Uh, where do you want to begin? We got a pay-per-view tomorrow, which I'm going to do a live watch along. For. I'm going to, I think I'll pop in every so often. Um, I want to see what's going on. Yeah. We're going to do, uh, we got Night of Champions. Tomorrow we had Stone Cold Steve Austin at MSG. On Monday, which was awesome, we had the Undertaker at MSG on Tuesday. Um, uh. <laughs> I want to, I want to kind of, I, I want, it feels like it was so long ago. Mm -hmm. So I just want to go over really quick. How unbelievable is Stone Cold Steve Austin? He's the best. The, I mean, the fact that this guy gets the reaction he gets, mm -hmm. uh, he just makes everybody feel like such a lesser star. I'll tell you, uh, you know what, you know what's interesting about that. I'll tell you two things that. Mm -hmm. That make not they don't make Austin great. I'm not excusing these two things, but yeah. he he is so magnetic, so captivating. There's nothing but good feelings associated with him. And also, if this if uh, allegedly he did smack around Deborah Michaels, allegedly, right? Yeah, and did the whole Brock Lesnar thing, and, and, he, and, he, and he like took off. It was like almost like a high speed pursuit with him, wasn't right? There? Right, where he like and flew his yellow he was, Corvette. He was like drinking, doing some other stuff, yeah. apparently. If that happened now, it'd be over. He'd be done. Done. Right? But just because of, like, I guess the circumstances, not as popular. Regarding the weird stuff at, in the late 90s, this dude is still an enchanting figure. He's, he's a superhero. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, like, so charismatic. It's very. Yeah. But here's the thing. I heard the argument. Like, my thing was, look how over this guy is, mm -hmm. right? Like, look at the reaction he gets. Look at how larger than life he is uh -huh. when he's in there. He's a star. Absolutely. Uh, by every definition of the word. Ah. <laughs> you know, and I, and I presented this question. I'm like, there's nobody on that roster that feels like that. Right? There's nobody. So the mm, argument is. times, man. The argument is, well, he's a legend. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a legend. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's what it is. He's getting the nostalgic pop. He's a legend. He got that pop every single night. I don't think that's a nostalgic every pop. Every single man, yeah. Monday, he got that pop. Yeah. Every Monday, he got that pop. Every every time that music that 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 glass shattered, mm -hmm. people lost their minds. That Austin pop is yeah. something that you will never hear again. And it's and it's happened consistently every time this guy shows There's up. There's nobody on that roster that generates that kind of reaction. I think it it psychologically also it might be the glass a lot to do with the glass breaking because people like Whoa! yeah because like you it's it's a shocking noise yeah. and then you know it's coming you know yeah um he. I just, it's 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 unbelievable the mm -hmm. reaction he gets. Undertaker gets a reaction, but Undertaker never gets a pop. Have you ever noticed that? He gets it's, like a ooh. Everybody just stops what they're doing. Yeah. Austin gets a tremendous pop. The Rock gets a tremendous pop. There's nobody on that roster that's also, capable of it. Also, I think I think the ma again I'm gonna go back to the music, and I think the magic is those Jim Johnson songs are so are written so well that 
there's a pause for the crowd to pop, right? So like Austin's music, glass Flash breaks, shattered. pop. Da, 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 yeah. da, da. Austin uh, rocks music. If you smell, you hear like a little yeah. fill, like bum, bum, bum. And then it goes in. So like that little pause right there gives the crowd, they think they have to do something there, so they pop. Shawn Michaels music, same thing. Shawn know? Michaels, yeah, same thing. Uh, but Shawn never got that reaction. Brett never got that reaction. No. The Rock was always secondary to Austin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that was the thing. Uh, Triple H never got that reaction. Uh, he got that reaction one time in MSG 2002 when he came back. But these <sighs> are... They, I, I, you got the biggest name ever in pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. Hogan. A Hogan pop, probably. Yeah. You know, yeah. you got a Hogan pop. Flair never got that reaction. Yeah. Deafening. I'm talking about a deafening reaction. Yeah. The Road Warriors, legendary Road Warrior pop. Okay. Yeah. You know, but really, the reality is... Steve Austin, nobody has gotten that. And he feels such – he's so comfortable in his skin. Oh, absolutely. He's, he's out there. He's cutting a promo. He's telling a story. And you're like, oh, my God, this guy is over. Mm-hmm. Who's, who on the roster feels like that, that they feel comfortable? Go- I, I, I think it's that they're not comfortable. Well, I mean – These guys are tense. I, again, I feel like it's the whole – like, perceptively, it just seems like it's the whole walking on eggshells thing – Maybe it's dudes phoning it in. Who knows? Again, Austin and all those other guys you mentioned come from a different era, right? Where and and here's a good example too. Like apparently, and this is according to Austin. Apparently, Vince hates it when guys cut promos wall against the ropes. Oh, when they lean on right. the ropes, yeah. And Austin, that was Does Austin's it. thing because yeah. he's like, I don't care. Nobody's doing it. I'm gonna do it. And that's like, don't like, don't you love that when Austin goes to the ropes, he's hanging on with his arms. That's about it. That would give me hell yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, oh, this awesome. This guy's being Triple H does that too. Yeah, Triple H yeah. actually leans on the ropes. So Austin, uh, I-, I thought that opening segment was brilliant. It's fantastic. Um, did you hear him say Seth F and Rollins? Like Seth fucking Rollins? No. He he I think this happened after uh after the show went on. Uh-huh. Uh he cursed. He was cursing up a storm the whole time. <laughs> he called AJ Styles an asshole. Mm-hmm. Like within the first like ten minutes of the show. Uh, the, the crowd was a hot garden crowd. Great crowd. I don't know why they, I have no idea why they left off Austin in the beginning. You got to pop that crowd. I, and I mean, plus, like you, really... you know what though? The crowd is hot to begin with. You're in the garden for the first time in mm-hmm. for TV in years. I think it was a smart, all. I think it was a smart move to have Austin open the show because then they got to the business of setting up clash of champions. I, 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 I think that was their reasoning, <laughs> yeah. right? I think their reasoning was they didn't want to lose that, that moment to Monday Night Football. Right. This was one of the lowest rated Raws, uh, non-holiday Raws of all time. Yeah, which is crazy, man. Austin is the – imagine if you did not have the Austin nostalgic moment mm-hmm. and he didn't have the Garden as, as the venue. Yeah. Because they made a big deal for Madison Square Garden. Right, right, you right. would have been down tremendously. This might have been the lowest rated Raw. It was a really good Raw, though. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed everything about it. Uh. AJ's a big star too. That he feels great. like a star. Yeah. So great. Yeah. Um, I would have liked if he came out like if Austin came out later too. You I wanted so, more man? Austin. I wanted I wanted glass shattering like every every well, hour. He came out at the end. At the end, and then he did a he stunned AJ again in front of the crowd. Yeah. You know. Yeah. He's awesome. That dude's. Have you watched his show yet? Uh, I I've seen clips of. He's it. bumping around on the show. He is bumping around and on the show. He's I've, liking it with Lance Archer, and I think that's pretty excellent. The, uh, I think there's a reason for that. Yeah. I think you're Austin's gonna see going a lot more. Japan? I think you're gonna. See, I think you're gonna get Austin in the G1. That's what's gonna. Oh, uh, imagine. Um, Come you here, also. Town so they set up, you know, Night of Champions. Seth Rollins does not feel like a star. Uh huh. They they've weakened him. Like I I, I feel like everybody's just so half assed on that roster. All right. I, I I'm really getting bummed out by it. SmackDown Undertaker mm-hmm. opened the show with Sami Zayn. With Sami Zayn, that's great. Killed him, and that mm-hmm. was it. That's all you got. I'm cool with that. That's all you got. You got the end of it. But again, they kept it. They brought him out. They didn't see him until the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think this Bray stuff is with the eleven nineteen? Well, that like I, I people did research on it, and apparently it was the day the Undertaker debuted. Eleven nineteen nineteen ninety was the day that the Undertaker debuted. Yeah. So, but man, what what's on eleven nineteen this year? Uh, let's see. NXT. Eleven nineteen is let's take a, a Tuesday. So that's that's a SmackDown. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I don't know. I think I think that the whole Fiend thing is very interesting, but you could also tell, like, Bray Wyatt is very lucky, right? In, in what way? In the regard that that original concept of the Bray Wyatt character coming out with the lantern and the fireflies and the cool song, they kind of blew their load with him. Like, if, well, not immediately, but he was too cool for it's them. It's not SmackDown, by the way. SmackDown's on... On um, oh, that's right. On Fox at that time, he's too. He was too cool for people to know what to do with him, right? Mm-hmm. They lightning struck twice with the fiend and the Firefly Funhouse. Now it feels like they're protecting him very, very well. You know, like okay, we we effed up with his original incarnation. Now they're, we have something gonna protect them, yeah. completely insane that we need to protect. You know, they he's be, a new spooky guy. He is, in, and and they're doing a very good job with him. Mm-hmm. Um. It could be it, it. It's possible that it was a biblical reference. I think it's Ezekiel eleven nineteen uh-huh. that, and I forgot. I read. Thou shalt not eat a potato. On thou shalt not on a moving vehicle. Yeah, thou shalt not eat. <laughs> thou shalt not accept the potato from a Persian man on a moving vehicle. <laughs> uh, Austin three sixteen says, "Thou shalt not accept the potato." Don't give me that potato. Um. It could be, it could be, a, it could be that they uh, they made a big deal about Austin, so it could have been a you know like mm-hmm. Austin three sixteen Bray Wyatt eleven nineteen, I don't know. It could have been anything, but yeah. I, I, they're doing a very good job of keeping people interested in the character, what, he, limiting it, limit him. I think well, he's gonna probably pop up during Clash of Champions, right? Maybe he'll pop up for that. Yeah, right. Do you want to go through the card? Yeah, let's go through the card. It's tomorrow, by the way. It is tomorrow. Today's Saturday. I forgot today's Saturday. <laughs> I thought it was Thursday. I traveled back in time for two seconds. Was incidentally, it wasn't Thursday the day you ate that potato. That potato was Wednesday. Was it? Mm-hmm. It wasn't Thursday. I posted it on Thursday. Okay. You were so shocked by it that you had to wait a day. Yeah, I had to wait a day. <laughs> All right. So AJ Styles versus Cedric Alexander for the United States Championship. People in the back are very high on Cedric and. As they should be, he kind of floundered after the whole two hundred five live thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Cedric's getting a big push. I think this is going to be a great match. He's a great guy. I mean, he's unbelievable, Cedric. Did you? What did you think of AJ calling Austin an old fart? I thought that was hysterical. The old fart. <laughs> <laughs> I loved his Austin. I loved that he did his Austin. <laughs> I wish Gallus did the Gallus' Austin is one of my favorite Gallus of all time. I, I he does think well. Mm-hmm. I can't remember Gal. I've, I'm sure I've heard it, but yeah, uh, uh, he, my favorite character is Sex Ferguson. That yes. he does. That's my favorite <laughs> character of all time. Uh, who do you think's taking it, AJ or, or Cedric? Uh, I'm gonna say AJ. Okay, AJ's I, gonna take uh, it. I'm gonna go with Cedric. That'd be great. Yeah, as a U.S. champion, that's a nice way to give him a rub. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alexa and Nikki versus Mandy and Sonya. I think Mandy and Sonya are gonna take this. I want them to take it. Yeah, I think yeah. they deserve it at this point. Like very. Very good tag Dude, team. Let's talk about that promo Mandy cut on SmackDown. Oh my Terrible. God. Oh, my yeah. God. That thing fell flat on its face. Essentially calling Nikki ugly. Is Mandy is Mandy everything they wanted Eva Marie to be? You remember Eva Marie? The redhead? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Right? Yeah. Like, she's the actual, like, she's the one who can actually do athletic stuff. <laughs> she's, she's not bad. In the, I mean, no. when you talk about improvement, yeah. right? Like, you look at someone, you're like, oh, she's really good. Mandy Rose has improved tremendously. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like she's, as far as uh, the basics, she has it down. Do you remember when Trish started wrestling? Yes, I do. goddamn train She wreck. was so bad. <laughs> she was so bad. But Mandy takes it serious. Yes. And, and that's really half the battle. And Sonya is a legitimate, um, like, uh, MMA person. Not really. Yeah. Not really. She's, a, she's an MMA person. Kind of. Yeah. What do you mean, kind of? She never fought, really. Really? She didn't have yeah. a, I think yeah, she had a record. Like, I think like maybe she did like some. Am I thinking of somebody else? You're thinking of uh, every every other MMA person they brought in the company. I'm thinking of everybody else. <laughs> uh, Roman versus Eric Rowan. I'm actually looking forward to this. It's a no DQ match, so you're gonna get a lot of like probably like uh, gimmick chair spots and stuff like that. You know, you know what's interesting about this? Think mm-hmm. about all the people that they're elevating right now, right? Yeah. They 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 are putting emphasis on Buddy Murphy. Yes. Or they did at least. Yeah. Right. Buddy Murphy, which was apparently Cedric. A fluke. Cedric. Yeah. Uh, Rowan. You're starting to see them giving people chances. Yeah, uh, they do this from time to time. They also did this when SmackDown and Raw split brands. Yeah, and you got Jinder Mahal and all these guys getting opportunities. Where is Jinder, by the way? Where is Jinder? He disappeared. Yeah, the dude was on top of the world a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, who think, do you yeah. think takes this? I think they're going to continue the story. I'm going to go with a wacky ending because Daniel Bryan's not on the card. Well, they, are they going to sort? Well, remember, they're limiting his singles actions. Mm-hmm. Um, where here's, here's a question here. Where are they going to go from here? They can't possibly do a swerve, right? No, I think Rowan Because Rowan, Rowan, Rowan murdered Daniel Bryan already. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he chokeslammed him, did the weird thing. I think, I think Dan, you, have the Dan, you have Daniel Bryan showing up. Maybe Roman wins. Uh, Daniel Bryan costs Rowan whatever it is. And then you get the Daniel Bryan, Eric Rowan program. Okay. Uh, and then Roman moves on to something else. Okay. Because they're moving to Fox soon. And you need Roman. I don't know. I'm curious. I'm curious where they go with this. It's they they kind of change directions multiple times. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like they don't know what to do with Daniel Bryan at this point. They were gonna have his groundbreaking announcement, <laughs> yeah. and then that went away. Like they they teased it for two weeks. He never said anything. That got scrapped, and then they did this forklift thing where you were imagining it was Daniel Bryan all along, right, 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 right. and now it was Rowan going rogue, and Daniel Bryan talking about he doesn't like liars, but he protected Rowan the first week, mm-hmm. and he covered it up. So I, I'm i very uh, confused about this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I agree with you on that. It's a little muddled, but I really do think that when they do move to Fox, this is a big setup to get all your natural faces as faces again. I think Daniel Bryan's turning face to have yeah. to be on Fox just so they can revive that yes chant and have people tune in. I'm into that. Uh, same thing with, with Roman, man. They want to push this dude to the moon again, and he's going to be like the face. He's basically the face of SmackDown. You know what I was remembering? Do you remember that Royal Rumble? That first one, Roman was still a heel with the shield. And he was in the ring with Rusev. And, and they lost their minds for Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. That was a moment to pull the trigger. Whoa. And they waited. They just freaking waited. They couldn't do it. Yeah. He was. I. I, I just rewatched that. If, if I. What was it? Twenty thirteen. Twenty fourteen. That might have been the last CM Punk one. Is that the one? I think so. Yeah, it could have been that one. This guy was so over with that crowd. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, they twenty fourteen. There you go. Thank you, King. He unbelievable. It was twenty fourteen. What, yeah. what was 2013? Who won 2013? Do you remember that? I don't know. Randy Orton. Randy Orton. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right, actually. I think yeah, you're right. I'll throw it out there. Randy Orton. Um, all right. So next, yeah. Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship. Do you see Becky retaining because she's held on to the title for quite some time and then chasing Sasha? That's going to be interesting with Sasha. Mm-hmm. I, do you think she's settled down a little bit? She's getting a little stale? Who? Becky. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. I feel like her, it, like, see, that's the thing. The Ronda thing was so great because Ronda ha- was such a presence that it, it elevated Becky Everybody. Lynch and elevate, and Becky yeah. Lynch elevated herself. Now it's kind of like the man shtick is kind of, I feel like it could go either direction. It could get really lame or it could get even better again. Uh, the- it was a work. Uh, it was a work, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was Cena. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the other the thing with that is like, I'm, which is kind of funny is I'm very interested in the whole Ric Flair litigation situation. <laughs> That's hysterical. Rick's you know? contract's ending soon. It's gonna go. Yeah, that dude's gonna show up in AEW with the other four horsemen, and all you need is like Barry Windham. They're all there, right? Yeah. Well, Arn's there. Tully's there. Arn and Tully are there. Yeah. Imagine if Ric Flair shows up in AEW. Rick. Rick Who Flair did... and Ken and put him in Kenny Omega's corner. <laughs> oh my god! Can you imagine that? Kenny looks good in a suit. Did you see Cocaine Kenny? <laughs> Cocaine Kenny. No. He looked like Cocaine. That, that's the nickname he's getting, Cocaine Kenny. Mm. He looked, he was all nuts and disheveled. Ooh, I like it. Uh, okay. Oh, from being the elite. Yeah. I missed the last Cocaine one. Cocaine Kenny. You got to see it. Um, so who do you think takes this, Becky or Sasha? I, maybe Bailey inter- interferes. I don't know. Oh, you think they're going to be like, they're going to have their back like that? You know what? I think it's time. Maybe, maybe if Sasha gets it, because you got to elevate these girls, right? Mm-hmm. If you kill Sasha now. You're hurting that yes. that big thing that she just did. I think Bailey helps her win. I, I I'll agree with that. Sasha wins. Uh, Nakamura versus the Miz. I I feel like this is going to be a great match. Um, I think the Miz is going to take it as an F you to Jericho. Nakamura versus the Miz. Yeah, everybody's saying that because yeah. Jericho has the record. But I mean, that's so petty, right? When you, when you look at your Grand Slam champions and you look at your best of the best, mm-hmm. what's more impressive historically? Chris Jericho or the Miz? Oh, Jericho. But on Jericho. the but on the record books, 
It's going to be Mrs. Face. It's going to be Mrs. Face. And they did that. And remember, I mean, the pettiness. They did that with CM Punk because he had the longest title reign in modern WWE, and they let Brock overshadow it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think Miz is going to take it. I feel like this is going to be a good match. I want to see Nakamura. And then Randy, like, and then Randy took it. And then Randy took it as the nephew to Brock. Do you remember that? When Randy won the title? Did he? He became the youngest world champion, yeah. No, 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 no. That was... Yes. Yeah. 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 That so was, it was the Rock, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then but and then it was the Rock. Then Brock beat him, became the youngest. Right. And then Randy, Randy beat him, but Randy was not the youngest WWE champion. Right. He was the youngest World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, I gotta mute this. I, I gotta mute it, baby. I gotta mute this, baby. Uh, okay. So I'm saying Miz is gonna take it. You have this is a stacked card. Uh, New Day, Biggie and Xavier versus the Revival. Um, for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, I think New Day retains. Uh yeah, let's go with New Day. Right. Uh, Drew Gulak versus Umberto Carrillo versus Lince Dorado. Uh, I love Drew Gulak as the cruiserweight champ, and I want him to retain. But I do feel like they're gonna give it to Umberto Carrillo. What did you think of uh Grand Metallic and um loved it, man? And good, Ray, good showcase. I think Ray's in the position with the company where he's like, I want to wrestle this guy. I want to wrestle that guy. You know, interesting time to do that match, mm-hmm. right? Like they've really. I, I can't believe how much they damaged Ray. He had that series with, yeah. with Andrade that was remarkable. Mm-hmm. And then they just like, you're a sack of shit. <laughs> you know? I disagree with that. What is the logic behind that? They did the same thing with Kurt Angle. Yes. Why do they do that? I don't understand why they do that. It's not Sergeant Slaughter going out there. Right, right. You know, I get it. I get that whole thing like, well, Slaughter would go out there or Hacksaw would come out and get squashed. And those guys will. It's not the same. I think. I think. Person, this is my personal thing. I think, as a fan, and as a fan who's been watching very a very long time, I think the Kurt Angle and the Ray thing parallel each other. Where it could be a, it could be something where Vince tells them, "Hey, listen, you're one of the greatest of all time. Go out there, tell me if this guy's good." Put Ray in a match with Andrade. Ray goes to the back and says, "Yo, he's Andrade. Awesome. Andrade's unbelievable." Right. Put yeah. Ray in a match with Grand Metalik. Ray goes back there and says, "Yo, he's he's awesome. You That's know, a future like, world champion, right?" Grand Metalik? No. Uh, uh, Andrade. <laughs> yes. Uh, they, yeah. If they don't put that title on that guy. I want to see him with a length. I want to see him have a lengthy reign with the IC title. He will look good with that title. Yeah, absolutely. He's a handsome boy. Yeah. Yeah. You it's know? a handsome belt. He is, and it is a handsome belt. Uh, I'm saying Umberto Carrillo or Drew Gulak wins. I, I think Drew Gulak. Drew Gulak, uh, Gulak retains. And I also think it's very interesting too how Triple H this week said that NXT may absorb 205 Live. Yes, I think that's that's a very smart thing for Absolutely. them to do. Uh, take that title, move it to, to move it to NXT, mm-hmm. and and that crowd will eat that eat that up. Oh, absolutely. This crowd does not appreciate what they're doing. No, it's an arena crowd, man. They don't, arena, they don't yeah. care about. Uh, not I mean, no offense I to get the it. dudes, but like they don't care. They don't, like it's after not, the show. Yeah, it's not full sale. Or put them on before. Put right. them on. I, I've always said put them on before the show. But and I also have, and have yeah. it shorter. Uh, I agree with that. But I think if they get absorbed, imagine this: they get absorbed into NXT. Right? Let's say Gulak has the champ. I love Drew Gulak. Let's say he has the championship. Right? Uh huh. He'll say, you know what? This is not enough. And he challenges Adam Cole. Okay. You know, so you have like you can have like those double belts kind of floating around, and it's a good extra title for NXT. Well, they're also looking to add a secondary belt to NXT. Great. I've been Cruiser told that it's been designed already. No, oh, yeah. no, no. A, a, a like a like another title. Really? Yeah. Like a TV title? They're they're playing with the idea. The USA title. I have no idea. They no. should move the US title to NXT. I I've been told that they're playing with another title that they're gonna have on that show. So you have so you have, I you know what it, maybe it is the cruiserweight thing. I, but uh, I was told that there's a title designed. Wow. And they already have a secondary title on wow. that thing, and it's the North American title. Yeah. So and the I, tag belts. And tag belts. So I don't know what they would add as a as a secondary title. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Kofi versus Randy. Kofi versus Randy. I think Randy needs to take this. No, I think Randy. I think Kofi's reign is over. No, I think Randy puts him over like nobody's business. Clean in the middle of the ring. Boom drop. Trouble in paradise. Kofi's name is like how my mother says coffee. Coffee. My mother says Kofi. I don't think I've ever heard coffee. Say coffee. 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 Um, so you're going Randy? I'm going Randy. I want him to take it. I'm over. I'm over Kofi. Uh, Kofi. I'm over Kofi Reigns. I'm, I'm over Kofi. Ugh, they smushed together. 
I'm uh I'm down with uh, with Kofi retaining. Uh, Are you? Yeah. I I love Kofi as champion. I'm telling you they got they gonna they want that big dude going into Fox. Kofi as champion fills me with glee. Uh What's a better champion for you? What's more believable, Kofi or Randy Orton with his beautiful snake-like skin? Randy but like he uh He's had too many. He's 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 done. Randy's Randy's like he could just put over like I think Randy should go to every show, flare it up, and put over every single dude. Randy's one of these guys mm-hmm. where this guy's a legend already, yeah. right? Like he's the vet. He's like that John Cena level. John mm-hmm. Cena, Batista, Randy Orton, right. that that class. There's nowhere in this roster that Randy Orton fits. There's nowhere. Ooh, but he can work with everybody. A, but give give me a guy that he fits with. In a program. Rollins. Him and... I don't know. Like, there's nothing mm-hmm. natural that comes to me. I I feel like he's so big. I'd like to see a Randy and Roman, like a hardcore Randy and Roman feud. Give me four guys on the roster mm-hmm. that would be a great program for Randy Orton. Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, oh. Roman Reigns, Cesaro. You would think those are great programs. Absolutely. To you. To you. I'm saying mainstream. Who's more mainstream than Roman Reigns? I think it I think it has to be a big guy. Big guy. Big guy. Braun Strowman? I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that either. Yeah. Uh, Samoa Joe, I think that'd be great. Great pick. Yeah. I like that. That's actually a really good one. Him and AJ had a great program. Mm-hmm. Uh he just he he's so He's from a different era, mm-hmm. you know, when he's in there. I mean, he's great. Fundam- he's he's yeah. one of the best workers mm-hmm. in the company. But he's just so rainy. Uh, that, there you go. John Cena. We're going to have to see Cena and Orton again. What's up? I'm back. He's going to come back. He's coming back. <laughs> I think uh, I think he uh, he's the one to beat Kofi. John Cena? Going into SmackDown. Do you think people would be really mad? We need you, John Cena. You know what? I don't think John Cena's coming back for a while. That dude's filming Suicide Squad uh, 2. What is he playing in he, it? I, apparently, a uh, cop or a marine? No, apparently he's playing uh, this character called Peacemaker. Uh, what is he's it? Play, about? He's like a cop who flies around with a jetpack. I knew he was a cop. <laughs> I freaking knew it. He had a big I knew. Imagine him as the Joker. Oh no! I want I wanted to be the worst Joker. Just ever. like the most muscular Joker of all time. <laughs> he would beat Batman. That's how he beat Batman. Oh no! Um, what do you think of the Joker movie? I think it's going to be awesome. I disagree with every single person that's uh, that says a. This is gonna promote. I know uh, incel I know. violence. I know you can't criticize art. I think you're stupid if you're if you're an artist and you're criticizing art because you're worried about you anxiety about something. Yeah, you're a dumb dumb and should be removed from the conversation. Then, then I think we need to get rid of video games if that's the argument. Yeah, exactly. Or anything. I love that. Or I love that. Anything. That's the argument. I I, I actually you know. I want to take a little turn on this because I yeah. wanted to bring this up to you. Sure. Yeah. I I, I saw all those arguments and mm-hmm. I saw people that defend that say like. You're an idiot if you say video games are causing, yeah, yeah. you know, all these shootings. The same people are now saying, well, this movie's, you know, mm-hmm. inciting incel violence. Uh, dude, you think sitting in front of a computer from the age of six years old doesn't desensitize you exactly. to, to shooting? I, I mean, listen, I'm not one of these video game people, like anti-video mm-hmm. game, anti-video game violence people. Yeah. To each his own. But you got to be honest, you know, if one's doing it, the other one's also doing it. You well, know what I mean? You I th- can't pick one over the other one. But that goes with everything. You know, I think it's like it, there's so many factors that go into stuff like that where it's like how you raise your kid. Like, yeah. what do you expose them to at what age? What kind of home does this person come from? Like, are they adjusted? You know, like, you know what I mean? Not, there's a lot not, that goes into play. Not to the point where you're ho- – I think, I think the big issue, at least for me, is when parents coddle their kids too much and they end up being like – Bozos, not bozos. bozos. Yeah, like, I got it. I got it. So no, no, okay, no. so like, yeah. I, I'll, I'll give you a quick story. I was at a family party not too long ago, and uh, if I have a little too much in me, I go on like a little bit of a like hug, a, like a, slapping like and a, hugging, like a chopping spree. Yeah. And uh, you love to chop, chop and hug, right? And my my brother in law, some mostly is on the receiving end of it at a family party. He's cool with it, you know. He'll give it back or whatever. But um, there was a. A kid there, he was like maybe twenty years old. Yeah, you know, twenty, twenty year old. He was a person, guy, M- guy. Yeah, messing around, horsing around. Uh, I gave him like a, I, 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 I leaned into it, gave him like a big old chop, right, and uh, he turns around and he's like, he's like, mom, did you see that? We we're horsing around over there. <laughs> he gave me, and she was like, okay, that's great. And I was like, and later I was like, hey, I'm sorry, I smacked around a kid a little bit and she was like you know what he needs it that's great like that's don't awesome. worry about it just that's like awesome. and i was like that's 
that's the age we live in where like kids are so coddled that they don't get it you know yeah i and, and that's another thing too where like it's not it's not part of their regular yeah, yeah. i th- and also i don't know this might be like a personal thing but i do really feel like regardless of gender kids need to horse around horsing around is horsing fun. around yeah. is awesome you know i'm 38 years old. I still love horsing around my buddies. Yeah, we play dick tug every week. Some of them don't like it, <laughs> but that doesn't stop me from <laughs> clobbering somebody in the head. <laughs> uh, but, but, like, I, I know. You know what I'm saying. I know. Yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to bring up the Joker thing. I think it's crazy mm-hmm. that people are like, this is going to incite, this is gonna incite uh, school shootings. No, it's a freaking movie. And by mm-hmm. the way, if your kid is wacky, I'm going to tell you, every parent knows when their kid is wacky. Everybody knows. Oh, yeah. This whole concept that you don't know your kid is all screwed up, maybe you should be, you know... Mm-hmm. A little bit more on top of this, trying to fix this problem. One of my cousins has three kids and her little one, and she's awesome. And she'll uh, she'll be like, you know, I think he's going to grow up and be a giant douche. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man. Sometimes you can't help it. Yeah. Right? All right, let's go back to wrestling. Yes, yeah, so we live in a society. We live in a society. Uh, all right. Uh, so <sighs> what's happening right now? John Cena is going to return at some point. I don't think he's coming back during this paper. No. Video. Uh, I also don't think he's going to be coming back full time, but I can see him on that first episode of SmackDown. He yeah, absolutely. And if they get the, the Rock first couple weeks. to be on that first episode too, you can have like a nice little back and forth with him. You're gonna have to have everybody there, right? Yeah, because I think just going to Fox is not enough to pull tremendous ratings. They need to yeah. make that show. But you know, have you seen those NFL, uh, you know, ads that they're putting on? They're really during good. Football they're during really Sunday good. Sunday football. Yeah, it's all day long. Mm-hmm. The commercial's great. All day long, they're giving, you know, promote, they're promoting SmackDown. So this, this mm-hmm. is going to be a big crossover. You know, it's the same demo, essentially. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are going to tune into Fox to watch it. They're going to, Fox also, they, because it's on Fox, they may just strictly go with your um, right wing. Uh, right wing Cena. I right, want right wing Oh, Cena. no, I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> I want re- extremely right wing. You want like pro life Cena? I want, I want, I want conspiracy anti, theory, anti vaxxing. Oh, anti LGBTQ Cena? And, and, I would just want extreme. Don't bring right. that around here. Don't bring that around here. <laughs> um, so terrible. I, I don't want to see, see that. that. I don't, I'm, I'm like, I don't want to see any like weird right wing stuff on SmackDown. <laughs> I don't think politics and art like mix. Yeah. I mean, like they do, but in this case, like, a little too much. I get. Um, I I hate when people tell me to vote. Just to, like, just to vote in general. Just, just voting. I hate the whole rock your vote thing. Hey, I hate buddy, being vote. Told, rock don't tell me what to vote. do. Like how? Like, I hate rock the vote. Like eighty. <laughs> <laughs> I hate MTV telling me to vote. God damn! You uh, live in a different. You live in a society. <laughs> I just watch VHS tapes from nineties that I used mm-hmm. to record all day long when rock I was in vote. school. Uh-huh. I'm watching Jerry Springer. Yeah. Uh, and I'm watching MTV T- uh, TRL. All day long. And Carson Daly's telling me to go vote. Oh, my God. Uh, I mean, I vote. It's your duty as an American citizen. I love to vote. I just don't want to be told to. Who's telling you to vote? Everyone. Everyone's shoving those stickers in my face. Really? The posting of the stickers after they go and vote. You got a sticker. Imagine this. Grown Mm. adult getting a sticker. I love it. You love the sticker. You love the stickers. I love stickers in general. I don't want to be told. Put stickers. I got a speaker John Cena saying you can't choose that. Oh, no. It's phenomenal. Oh, no. All right. What else do we have on the Um... Uh, Seth Rollins and Braun Strowman versus Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler uh, for the tag team championship. I think uh, Roode and Ziggler are taking those belts. They're a phenomenal tag team. I like I, it. I want to call them Roodler. <laughs> I, I kind of like that they're together. They kind of fit. Yeah. Imagine what could have been Bobby Roode. Uh, put the put the tag belt on him. I think he'll be okay. Okay. Um. Then you have Bailey versus Charlotte. I think Bailey retains. Charlotte doesn't need another one. Well, what number would this be for her? Eight? 17. 38? Uh, let's take a look. Actually, you know what? I uh, think it might be eight. I think she's a seven-time champion. MG Geek, Montavious Gangster Geek, can you tell us how many um, championship reigns Charlotte Flair has had? Ten. Crown Wolf says ten. Crown Wolf says ten. Is that counting NXT? Mm-hmm. I thought it was eight. She's, like, unbelievable. Uh, what do you think of Bad Girl Bailey's half-assed Bad Girl Bailey? Uh, I like it. I'm cool. I think she's 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 getting into that. Yeah. She's getting into that character. They were trying different outfits. Yeah. They've been doing test photos. Macho Madness. Outfits. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of want her to do uh, sensational cherry makeup. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I feel like that would work. Like, oh, my so God. Well. I would love that. Yeah. I Sasha doesn't that. need any any face paint. No. Uh, but I think Bailey. Bailey would, needs face paint. Bailey would look awesome with, like, 
electric and like blue eyeshadow and maybe yeah. some Luna stuff going on. Luna, uh, you wanted to shave your side of her just, head and just have the tattoos? Just go for it, you know? Oh, my God. I would love that. And possibly the main event, uh, Seth Rollins versus Braun Strowman for the Universal Championship. Imagine if they pull the trigger on Braun Strowman. So he got a nice pop on Monday. He did get a nice pop. I'm trying to think. Does Braun, does it hurt Braun, or does it help? Mm-hmm. Who, who does this help more? Okay. Nine-time time, nine time champ. Nine-time champ. Yeah. Wow. If she wins this. She's eight-time currently. She'll be nine-time if she wins it. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know. Do you put the title on Braun? Yeah. They did too many stop and goes with that no, guy. No, I'm going yes. Do You're it. going, yes. Put it's, a title on Braun. It's time to do it. Yeah. I'm, I, I would be okay with this. I Bro- think Seth needs Seth needs something. Rollins has gotten a little stale. They hurt. They killed him with and that I, thing. And I also think it's time to turn Rollins heel again. Push Braun as the superhero and Seth as, like, the squirrely villain They don't does CrossFit. Have, you know I like that. I know. Listen, yeah. I, I like him as a heel. The problem is they didn't have... They don't have enough baby faces on this roster. Yeah, they do. They, they have tons of baby strong, faces. I'm saying like a strong top tier baby face. Okay. They don't. The, the reality is they 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 bury all mm-hmm. all the baby faces. How about this? Put the belt on Braun, mm-hmm. right? David and Goliath with AJ Styles. David and Goliath with AJ. I'm okay with that. Right. That's fine too. That's good. And you but, have the club. But is Braun a babyface? Do you keep him as a babyface? Push him as a huge babyface for the next two years. Crowd Braun. loves him, man. Yeah. He's charming. He's not that great on the mic, but he gets his point across. I would Got like a big to beard. see shave the beard. I think Braun needs to shave the beard. He's a handsome dude without that beard. I think he needs to shave the beard and get a crew cut. No, shave yeah. the beard. I think he needs shave the beard, right? Yeah. Uh, no more pants, no more shirt. Yellow trunks. Sing, uh, yellow trunks, okay. Uh, yellow bandana. Yellow bandana. And then grow the mustache. Little mustache. Yeah. And then he comes out and he rips his shirt. I don't think that's been done before. I don't think it's ever been done. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have, uh, that's a card for Sunday. And also they moved the um, King of the Ring final. To they, Monday. They f that up because Elias got hurt, right? Elias got hurt. Bar- it's, but it. it it's going to be Baron Corbin. I don't think it was going to th- – that match was not going to change. It no. was going to be Gable, but they they mm. Gables, they pulled the trigger on Gable really weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is really leading – to King Gable sounds good. Sure. King Chad. King Chad. King Chad. Better. Total, but, he's a total Chad. But King Baron. <laughs> King Co- uh, Cobra. King Cobra. King, King Cobra sounds awesome. King, King Cobra. <laughs> uh, Baron Corbin <laughs> as King. Ooh, I'd like it if he changed his name to Baron Cobra. Baron Cobra. Baron <laughs> Spencer Coburn. The ball truth. Oh man, he could do the ball truth. Baron Corbin, the yeah. ball truth. Uh, they. I don't know. Who do you think Baron's taking it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. They're so high on him. I like. I, listen, and like we've been fans of his, but like he's such a great. Like he's got so many great heel accolades, you know. And he's never been close to uh getting a belt. There was a let's go, Baron chant. Yeah. On Raw. Mm-hmm. In New York. Let's go Corbin. Yeah. Let's go Corbin. Crazy. Love it. There's something about him that he's getting you know. he's slowly getting over. Mm-hmm. They saw something. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. I'm telling you. Got people people are getting into this. You think they're setting up like a massive face turn? People are getting into this. Imagine him as a baby face. Fired great. up Arista. Yeah. <laughs> Fired up Arista. Well, I think he'd have to go babyface outfit. Imagine him in like a like a Dude, He outfit. was the next he was the next uh biker taker. Yeah. Can't, I, uh, unbelievable. I still say they effed up. I wish I worked in WWE and hard pushed, like, bring this dude out as the son of Kane. With the mask? No. Just like, he's my son. <laughs> <laughs> like, he doesn't talk like that anymore. <laughs> Whatever, man. Make him talk like uh, that. Uh, USA, NXT going to USA next week mm-hmm. on Wednesday. They're doing something weird for the next two weeks. They are. The first hour is on USA. The, the second teaser. hour yeah. is on the USA Network. You mean on the WWE Network? Uh, I'm sorry. The first hour is on the USA <laughs> Network. Second hour is on the WWE Network. Mm-hmm. Uh, weird move. But for two weeks. But for two weeks only. Yeah. Uh, they probably have commitments to Full sale, And also the pre-tape stuff. Well, they are going to be. Bless Every you. time you say Full sale, I, I sneeze. Um, they Achoo. are going to. No, there are no pre-tapes. Not anymore? No. Now it's going to go live? It's live. Oh, that's cool. Live. 
Um, how do you how do you feel about Gargano being NXT for life? NXT for life. <laughs> uh, they. So lo- I want to talk about this because this is oh, they really... gotta show suits. Oh uh, yeah, they gotta yeah because they can't they can't move it. People need yeah. those suits, man. A great, good show though. I don't care. It's not a bad show. Have you watched <laughs> it? It's not a bad show. Um, l- l- I want to talk about this because this is this is the end of NXT as we know it, right? Okay. The NXT we've known for the last couple of years, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. How many years has been has this been going on? Seven years since the first takeover. Yeah. Uh, this is over. It's a, it, it's a whole different world now that we're playing it. Mm-hmm. You got a two hour live show, going head to head with AEW. You can't. It, it was since 2010, but mm-hmm. you know, like the, the NXT that we know today, no longer developmental. What, who was the first champion that was like, okay, this is not developmental anymore? In that in that capacity, when we're looking at takeovers, Neville, Sammy, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm Kevin gonna go. Owens. Kevin Owens. Okay. Yeah, I'll go with Kevin Owens. He was the first time. I think a lot of people were like, "Whoa, <laughs> what's this?" Well, also that's that's a rumor too, or a teaser that KO yeah, may back. end up going back to NXT for a little bit. I It'd be awesome. I think that'd be great. I think him and Sami Zayn could go back there. I think I just want to <laughs> see him interact with Adam Cole again, like they used to do. Oh my God! Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I, I th- there's gonna be a lot of changes. We still don't know what those are, and it's gonna be played by ear. I know they're saying that you know Vince isn't really involved, and this is still Hunter's project. Uh, it really comes down to ratings. Wait till the ratings pop. And it's then... the same people producing it still, mm-hmm. so there's no like Kevin Dunn production. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Cole's not gonna be you know doing commentary. Yeah, they're yeah. keeping things the same. But here's where the thing is, right? Here's where the problem lies. You're running a show in full sale every week. Right. You got, you know, the whole thing is larger than life. Mm-hmm. That's the whole thing with WWE, right? Everything is larger than life. You're going up against AEW traveling. Right. In sold out buildings, mm-hmm. at least for now. Right. Right. That first show, it's a 20, it's a 20,000 person building. Mm-hmm. They're probably going to have 15,000 people there. That's a giant building. Yeah. And NXT is going to be in that dark mm-hmm. full sale auditorium whatever right, it is right, right. they're gonna have to become touring nxt start has to start doing touring yeah on and i know that's very cost costly for them right but they're getting a tremendous amount of money for this show so now yeah. it's a it's a money generating product mm-hmm. i'm curious how the changes affect the brand so you think they need to move out of the nxt zone basically I, I think they're going to have to. They're going to have to move out. But uh, it depends. It depends how good that crowd is. You know, they, there's only a couple hundred people there. If that crowd is hot and on fire yeah. every week, you got something good here. Well, you know, you know, it's super interesting right now, too. It's the fact that you're getting, let's say, two hours of NXT on USA, right? Going up against AEW. There's a lot of wrestling happening. And not only that, but wasn't it announced yesterday that Access TV and Impact are teaming up? Yeah, so that's the next right. big story. Uh, they're not teaming up. Ax- uh, Anthem bought Access. Right, okay. They bought them. So the problem now is, what do you do with New Japan? Ooh, do, do you, would you care for a New Japan Impact partnership? They're still very sour over Okada. The whole Okada botch. Okay. So do you know what happened yeah, with yeah, them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, for people who don't know. He did the excursion. And they, they sent them no. to, they had, a, they had a partnership. They're working together. Mm-hmm. A couple things went wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a problem with a title switch uh, for the tag titles, mm-hmm. the IWGP tag titles. Kurt Angle was IWGP champion at the time. They were doing a weird thing, you mm-hmm. know, back and forth. Kurt had every title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Okada was lent to TNA, and Okada was, like, the hand pick. like, this is going to be the guy mm-hmm. for us. So take care of him. Push him. Let him learn a different style. They, they did that thing. They buried him. I, I mean, to a dumb, idiotic gimmick. Yeah. They gave him the, uh, what was it, the Green Hornet? Kato. I mean, Kato. Essentially, right? Wasn't that it? Um, I don't remember. I know they, they botched him completely, but also not the first, not the, not the only New Japan botch, because they, they had Sonata for a while. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, it was Sonata. Yeah, Sonata was there. Impact had Sonata because they did a, I want to say Noah. Or maybe it was another company, but they had a partnership with Muda, and Sonata was Muda's guy. Was that the Russell One partnership? I think so. Yeah, and I think Russell One was Muda, and then they had the partnership with Muda, and the, he was like, "This is my guy. This is my protege." 
and he started out strong, and then they dropped the ball with him. Now, look at how far Sonata has come as a wrestler in New Japan. The two yeah. guys that Impact botched, Okada and Sonata, are having five-star matches with each other, like, left and right. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, where does this leave Ring of Honor? Because it seems like Ring of Honor is, like, just floundering. There were rumors that Impact is looking to buy Ring of Honor. Anthem Great. is looking to purchase Ring of Honor. Whoever buys Ring of Honor is not buying it to keep the product. They're buying it to get the library. If that's the case, then Who, WWE should buy Ring WWE, of Honor. WWE, that, that, it was happening. Mm-hmm. We, we spoke about this a couple of years ago. There were discussions. Mm-hmm. WWE would benefit from that library more than anybody else because all those guys are there. Absolutely. Who's, who on Ring of Honor, top Ring of Honor guys, right? You're talking like the, from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. That archive, WWE could use for oh, everything. Get it. Think about the Daniel Bryan stuff. Think about AJ Styles, Joe. Samoa Joe, CM Punk, uh, CM Punk, Cesaro. Mm-hmm. Um, give me more. Cassius Ono. Cassius Ono. Yeah, wrestling. I got. Yeah, yeah, fine. Uh, you have a tremendous library there. Yeah, Steve Carino. Steve Carino. Mm-hmm. You could have Steve Carino anthology. Yep. Uh, Seth Rollins. There you go. Yeah, he, was, he was Ring of Honor champion. Tyler Black. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have a a mega library of content that Absolutely. you've never been able to put out. This is unbelievable for them if they do this. They're gonna. They're not gonna have Ring of Honor on WWE TV. That's not gonna happen. Ring of Honor at this point is finished. You think so? I, I mean, they listen. Never say never because we're in the era where yeah. everything is niche programming. We said this about Impact mm-hmm. and how. They were, the, you know, they were the cockers that you couldn't squash, and now there's, you know, they're building up again. Yeah, apparently Impact is very good. It is very good. Yeah, yeah. it's not bad at all. Have you been watching it? I have. Yeah. I watch. I mean, I watch like the clips on YouTube. I, I can't. I can't have no sit room. there. I have no room left in my in my wrestling life. Yeah, there's a lot of wrestling going on. There's a tremendous amount of wrestling going on. Uh, I want Jay White to be everywhere. And you I want Jay White everywhere. I want Orange Cassidy everywhere too. Uh, I think for Ring of Honor. AEW kind of took that spotlight from them. Yeah, and not even in like a a screw you kind of way. They just left <laughs> like all those dudes. Just, I think Marty's leaving too, right? What what Marty, Marty's still there right now. So here's here's I want to I want to put it to you this way. As much as I love Villain Enterprises, I feel like if Marty has had intent to stay, that would have been the next big wrestling faction. It could have been, yeah. Right? Brody King's amazing. PCO is unbelievable. Flip is awesome. Marty's awesome, right? There's four great yeah. dudes there. Mar- Marty's up in November. I'm curious where he's going to go. I probably AEW, dude. Come on. I think I think Flip, I think him and Flip are going to AEW. I think they would benefit tremendously if him and Flip go. I want Brody King in AEW. I think they benefit with Brody King there. Also. And F- 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 PCO also. I- Bring Dr. Frankenstein with him. Where do you put Dr. PCO? Dracula, whatever in, his name is. I think PCO is going to go to Impact. That'd be great. I I'd think we'll see cool PCO and Impact. I'd be cool with that. PCO yeah. versus Scott Steiner? I would love PCO versus Scott Steiner. <laughs> Just two giant monsters. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot is changing over the next couple of months. We're, you know, we're in this wrestling boom. Mm-hmm. Do you want to do questions? Let's do some questions. All right, guys. Submit your questions here in the chat room. We're live every week, uh, sometimes on Saturday, sometimes on Thursdays, depending on our schedule. But we're live every week. To- next week, uh, we're going to be Thursday? Yeah. Okay, next week we'll be live on Thursday. I'll do a watch along tomorrow night. I may pop in on that. Yeah, Rich will in, in here or on, uh, maybe, on the maybe. video scope? I'll try, to do, uh, I'll try to hook up my camera to actually stream good this time. Okay, all right, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. And, and make sure you're not on, <laughs> you're not on dial-up this time. I was on 14.8. Uh, so whatever. whatever question you have regarding professional wrestling, submit them in the chat room. We'll do our best to answer them. Uh, if there's anything we forgot to talk about, also mention that, and we'll talk about that as well. We talked about everything. A lot of speculation happening over where Marty Scroll's going to go. A lot of people saying he's going to go to NXT. There aren't too many names left for big names left on the independent or, or signed somewhere that are available. Marty Scroll's one of those guys. I think Marty benefits from either decision because he will have TV time. Marty will have TV time, right? But where does where does Marty go? I think for Marty, he's going to go where the money is. I think at this point, his Ring of Honor. If he was ready to jump, he would have jumped already. Well, Marty's still being mentioned on 
being the elite. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm curious. Marty goes back to New Japan, joins the Bullet Club again. Oh, my God. That'd be great. Uh, let's see. Were you upset that Punk didn't show up at All Out? No. Uh, I do. I really appreciated his sit-down interview, though. And it was very... Did you listen to it? Did you hear it? I did, yeah. Very eye-opening stuff about how he's open to WWE talking to him, how it's all water under the bridge at this point, how he doesn't know where his future in wrestling is, and yeah. he appreciates the fame. It was a very nice... Very different, very different tone from I'm mm-hmm. never coming back. And also, like, this guy put over Cena like nobody's... But like, Cena's story was great. He was more pro WWE than AEW. Absolutely. Did you notice that? Mm-hmm. I thought that was fascinating because if you really want to stick it to somebody... Mm-hmm. Aren't you gonna, sh- you know? Listen, there's there's also still an opportunity. Absolutely, never say never. You could right? still show up on that first, you know, AEW show, make it like Nitro, right? Or Luger showed up, or this dude could show up in the Royal Rumble. He could show up in the Royal Rumble What's wherever he-, he goes. You know, I know a lot of people are angry at him, yeah, because I feel like CM Punk fans feel like he turned on them by not by leaving wrestling no. and being so bitter. The dude puts his body on the line every single night. It's not an easy gig at all. I mean, the simplest of things like bumping on your back is still, you know, something. Right. There's a learning curve there. Um, I wherever CM Punk would ever go, mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a tremendous acquisition. That's a big yeah. coup, huge impact. And also, one of the things that CM Punk said in that interview was, "I really don't think Triple H and Vince knew what to do with me." Right? I think they knew tremendously what to do with him. They they gave him every opportunity in the world. Right, but. He still was that odd man out even towards the end of his run. He had such, like, I don't think they understood why the fans liked him so much, you know, in that weird regard. Why did the fans like him so much? I think because he was, he came across as a very real character, you know. He was both super believable, loved his in-ring work, loved his mic work. So I know? remember the first time I heard about CM Punk. Do you mm-hmm. remember that? Yeah. Okay. It was Where, the Eddie Guerrero match. You, that, that was the first time you heard yeah. about him. In what year? Like 2004? Uh, 2004, 2004, yeah. 2000, no, it had, no, no, no. It had to have been 2002. Yeah. When he, when Eddie got fired. Right, because I was following like, it. I was big, I'm a big Eddie fan. Yeah. So I was following him. That's when CM Punk had the blonde hair, I think. So I remember hearing about him around then. Mm-hmm. And, and then I saw a picture of him. And I was like, yuck. And you were like, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, 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 no I swear to God. I, I would, because I would hear about it all mm-hmm. the time. This is before you would go to YouTube. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. YouTube did not exist in this era. Mm-hmm. It was still tape traders. Uh, the internet was still really early. I, you would hear on forums people talking about how CM Punk is the greatest wrestler. He's the greatest independent mm-hmm. wrestler. He's unbelievable. This guy's great. And then I saw him. And I was like, this is him? Mm-hmm. And then I saw a match of his. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is it. Mm-hmm. The hype with him was so much bigger uh-huh. than him. I think that was WWE's reaction. I think they they heard about him. People praised him. Don't get it. Yeah. They praised him. They praised him. They praised him. And then they saw him mm-hmm. and they said, holy shit, this is it. Right. This is the best the independence has to offer. Mm-hmm. If you look at it in that scope. He was. He was the, he king, was of the, the king of the Indies. Yeah. But if you look at it in with that mentality Mm -hmm. he's an extremely disappointing acquisition for you if you're wwe see that's very interesting but i think that changed also when bruce pritchard did that sit down interview with him and said let me see what this guy's all about and then that's when they started kind of figuring out a lot of it was paul Heyman. you know it was ring of honor it was paul Heyman. the Uh, ecw transition his his tremendous uh thing with raven that he had in ring of honor he went to tna Mm -hmm. if he was a big deal he would have been a big star in TNA. I don't think so. Look at Okada. <laughs> I, well, this was early TNA. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he would have gotten over there. I, there was the hype was much more than he was, mm-hmm. and WWE they saw him and they were disappointed that that's mm-hmm. who he was. Right. Uh, for all the the, the hype. Yeah. And the guy, uh, to be honest, he ended up becoming one of the best mm-hmm. in, in in that generation. Uh, in ring, mm-hmm. out of the ring. Yeah. You know, more than anything else, I think it was his attitude that hurt him. Nothing else. It was his attitude got him where he was, and it was his attitude that hurt him. Okay. But straight from the, so- from, straight from the horse's mouth, him saying, I don't think they knew what to do with me. I think now, if they brought him back and they said, hey, do your thing, I think it would be like that. Uh, uh, dude. Well, that him, second. Him and Daniel. But they didn't know yeah. what to do with Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Right? The only reason why Daniel Bryan is where he is right now is because CM Punk left. Mm-hmm. And 
I think a lot of that also has to do with the fact that guys like Dean Ambrose and Seth right. Rollins yeah. became such mega stars in the company. Mm-hmm. They're like, you know what? These guys aren't big, giant, jacked up dudes. These indie guys are great. These indie <laughs> guys are great. So imagine if CM Punk went to WWE. Yeah. You would have him and Brian again. Yeah. You would have him and Reigns, which I would love to see again. Oh, Rollins. Him and Rollins. AJ Styles. AJ Styles. Everybody. Cesaro Samoa again. Joe. Yeah. He would have more high caliber matches mm-hmm. in WWE and it would be more blockbuster, you know, showings than yeah. if he went to AEW. I know I know yeah. a- AEW would benefit tremendously from yeah. this. Him and Cody. Mm-hmm. Eh, right? No, I'd go with that. That's I know, but, but what's what's bigger? Him and Rollins or him and Cody? You know? him, yeah. But again, him like, and Kenny. If well, if he was like, hey, uh, I really want to help these guys out apart from the money and prestige, that's the good move. Yeah. If he was like, yo, I'm gonna go back there, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my the end of my career payday. Yeah. I'm healthy, you know, I'll I'll do a limited schedule. The healthiest he's ever been. I'll be the part timer. And like I think that's the cool thing about wrestling is I'll be the part timer that I used to cut promos against. Yeah. You know that's great. I, I actually I think that's really well said. I think that's a great way to look at it. Right. And then him turning around and then having those high caliber matches, almost like that Shawn Michaels second part of his career. So look at I think that's a great you know what? You're on. Today. Yeah, baby. You're on. Uh. I'm loving this. Uh, but if you look at, I, I think the CM Punk discussion is really interesting because mm-hmm. if you look at, um, just let's look at who he was facing in that championship run, mm-hmm. right? Who that top level tier was, or even mm-hmm. even at the end, he didn't have a lot to pick from. Yeah, he it was him. Who did he have? Just the Shield. It was the Shield. He had the Shield, and which Kane. they were coming up, right? The <laughs> yeah. Shield was coming up. He had Kane. He weird. had Ryback. A lot, of, a lot of Kane stuff. Stupid Ryback. Him and Ryback. There wasn't a tremendous like the the main players now in WWE. Mm-hmm. Even though the ratings are crap, yeah, are way higher, yeah, than what they were when he left. You have crazy upper echelons of wrestling happening. Even the mid tier, yeah. You got Nakamura in the mid card, right? Yeah, because CM Punk Nakamura, CM Punk Nakamura. Here, here's what happens, right? Mm. Royal Rumble, three. Two. No. One. Shane comes out. Uh uh-huh. Open challenge. Says he's best in the world. I'm the best in the world. Open challenge. Music. CM Punk comes out. But it's not him. CM Punk. It's a little, little, uh, an LP. A oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Exotico a little CM Punk. Punk. Yeah. Um, I do think, like, that, I feel like just because of that one interview, I'm really hoping that this dude comes back at least for, like, a couple of matches. Him and Shane, yeah. dude, for the best in the world. Mm-hmm. I think that'll happen. Open contract. To beat up a McMahon. Oh my god, that's what they're gonna do. Yep. Oh my god, I just saw it. Oh my god, and then the potato worked. The potato. I have a clip. Oh my god, I've seen it. I've seen it. Hold on. It's him and Shane McMahon, and he's getting revenge on a McMahon. Mm-hmm. That's how they're pitching it. Well, you know, you know, it'd be great since he had the fight with the, with Vince and and yeah. and Hunter. He wrestled Shane and he beat Shane up. Mm-hmm. And now he's really the best. And there's so many. Oh, my yeah. God. We're going to see this at WrestleMania. The return of the best in the world. Oh, my God. This is the WrestleMania match he always go. never wanted. Big music. Oh, I just want to hear that song again. I just saw it. I just mm-hmm. saw it. I don't know. Leading up to uh, Triple H. Uh, Him and Hunter again. <laughs> Hunter again. Oh, man. I don't know. I think that, you know what? We're not going to get him and AJ and Nakamura. We're going to get him and Shane and him and Hunter. CM Punk versus The Fiend. Oh, my God. CM Punk versus Adam Cole. He just goes to NXT. By the way, I I don't think he should should wrestle Shane. I don't think he needs that. I think that would be great. All right. uh, What else do we have here? We really veered off in a CM Punk hole right here. Um, Marty's contract's up in November. Yes, it is. Why doesn't coup rhyme with soup? Uh, Uh, Okay, here we go. Do you think we'll ever see Will Ospreay in AEW WWE? I think so. I think he's smart. Yeah. He's getting, he's bulking up a little bit. He's a New Japan guy. I, I would anticipate he's going to go to one of them. I think he's, I think he wants to be king of New Japan at this point, and he's committed to New Japan. And I think he's also firmly committed to British wrestling. You know, so it's kind of like a little half and half. Yeah. Um, uh, where do you, where do you think he'd fit in better? WWE, NXT. I'll say WWE, but not NXT. No? no? Yeah, I'll put him on the main roster. I'll put him on, like, Smack, Raw, Smack. Can we even say main roster anymore? Because NXT's the, still the main roster? Or? 
I mean, yeah, NXT, we... NXT is the main roster for mm-hmm. NXT at this point, mm-hmm. right? And if they do a big draft next year, you can have like the big yeah. swappies. Yeah, I think we're going to get some sort of uh, mm-hmm. war at Survivor Series. Kevin Owens do versus you, Do you start putting NXT on WWE pay-per-views, on the big four? Yes, absolutely. I, I, I have a feeling, uh, by the way, this idea is played around, but mm-hmm. I have a feeling they may lean towards this, that the big four become a three-branded show. <laughs> I'd love it. So Survivor Series, WrestleMania, Rumble, you say, Rumble, and then but what happens Summer to the takeovers? I, these are the weird changes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like those those are blockbuster takeovers, obviously yeah. when they do the big four. But where do they go from here? SummerSlam, Adam Super Cole Slam. versus Roman Reigns. Ah, uh, we're gonna might see it. All right, what else? Kevin Owens versus CM Punk. Great. We're gonna see everything. Roman Reigns versus CM Punk. People saying don't get me hype. The pot yeah. would be. Crazy when he beats Vince's kid. You're gonna see Gianni Gargano, Italian Gianni Gianna. Gargano. Gianni Gargano. Uh, you're gonna see him versus uh, everybody on the main versus AJ Styles. Okay, I want ethnic characters back. Why? I want a Greek guy. You have them. No, no, no. I want like a very over the top Italian guy. Not okay. like Santino, but I just want <laughs> more like, over the top. I want like an Italian hero. Well, like a pizza chef that's like no, yeah, covered in spaghetti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want plumbers. <laughs> I want pizza chef. Uh, I also want Greek characters. Okay, I want like the the uh, like the stingy Greek guy. Okay, yeah, you know, sure, like old Greek man. Yeah, I want that guy. Mm-hmm. I want all ethnic series. Do you want guys. like a like a like a ambiguous Eastern European in an ambiguous? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wearing like, dress shoes. Well, we, they still do it though. Mm-hmm. You know, Rusev. He's an ambiguous Eastern European. Yeah, but he's he was not, Russian. He, he was Bulgarian. But he doesn't come out in a tracksuit and dress shoes. <laughs> I think he should come out in tracksuit. Bro, calling everybody bro, bro. bro. Squatting and sitting, mm-hmm. big smoking marble lights let over and over again. Mm-hmm. Love it. I'm really into this. Billet. Um Gargano versus Champa would be a great match at WrestleMania. You know, I, you just named two ethnicities: Gargano and Champa. No, no, I'm saying like I just want you Eastern want a Greek Euro- guy and an Italian. I want I want Eastern <laughs> European. I want Eastern European. I want a Mediterranean, mm-hmm. and I love a Russian. Mm-hmm. I love a Russian heel. Those are the only three I want. Okay, I don't care about anything else. You know what? I want a charming Latin guy. You already have a charming Latin Who? guy. Who? Andrade. Is he charming? He's yeah, he char- is charming. Well, they, that's what they tried to do with his, like, the hat and the suspenders. Yes. Did it all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Did it all wrong. Um, And I think that's it. All what right. else do we have? Do we have anything left? What nah. else? What do we not talk about, MG Geek? Montavious Gargano. Montavious Gargano. <laughs> Michael uh, What's your input on them allowing guys like Woods and Ryder, Ryder and Hawkins uh, being themselves on their YouTube series. I think that's great. That's yeah, awesome. I think it's good for the company. I think it's good for them. It gives them another project to work mm-hmm. on. Uh, we're in the era of no preliminary guys, yeah. right? And these yeah. guys are all creating brands, and that's why they, they're not doing... Uh, ask your question, MG Geek. I didn't see it. Uh, I, I think they're in the era that they need to profit off of everybody, and that's why there's there's no more like preliminary guys. Right. So you have a guy like Ryder. Zack Ryder would not have been anything on this roster other than a preliminary guy. Yeah. Now he has a brand. He has action figures. They try to sell. They try to make money off of everything mm-hmm. that you do, so they get they recoup their costs. So if they're paying Ryder, let's say, a half a million dollars, or Hawkins a half a million dollars, yeah. I'm not saying that's their salary. I'm just giving an example. They want to make that money back. They mm-hmm. know these guys aren't selling buildings. Right. They're not selling tickets. But you know what they can sell? Action figures. Absolutely. T-shirts. T-shirts. Yep. Uh, posters. Posters, yeah. A lot of See, that's the thing. That's an interesting thing that you say that, too, because, like, that, that all the woo-woo stuff still goes. You know, you still yeah. see people with, yeah, like. people are into it. The sunglasses and all that. Um, I think it's fascinating that Xavier, all, like, Zack Ryder has an interesting story because he he broke the internet with. Z, true Long Island story, right? It was so. It was, and by the way, it was the first time they did somebody did this, and then that was met with resistance because they were like, "You can't do this." Tremendous right? amount of resistance. But then it flipped around because Xavier, I think Xavier was like, "Hey, I want to do this. It's not going to cost anybody anything. I just want to do this thing." Yeah. And this dude has a very successful video game, extremely show, successful, and he's brought. I think Triple H was on a couple of weeks ago. What did he play? I forgot. Like I saw the clip, and somebody needs to because I think Triple played. H was like, "Hey, if you get to this amount or whatever, I'll, show up. I'll be on your show." Um, and then he did it, but I love watching up, up, down, down because you get lots of the roster just being themselves. And I think that's what yeah. endears people to it. I think that's cool. The Zach and, but I don't want to see Undertaker on it. Oh, I do. You want to see the Undertaker playing video? What game video would, games. What game would Undertaker play? Super Mario Kart. Super Mario Kart? Yeah. Uh, what would Triple H play? 
Triple H will play Donkey Kong. RBI. Okay. <laughs> like Donkey Kong, like Donkey Kong's adventure on sure. SNES. Um, and I think like the Ryder and Hawkins show, the podcast is good because they're interviewing WWE guys, right? For about action figures. And their YouTube show is great too. Listen, these two big adult kids buying toys. This Love is it. great. It's great. Uh, let's have you ever seen this, uh, the interview somebody did with Scott Steiner? They're like, do you have any of your action figures? Mm-hmm. And he goes, are you effing kidding me? He goes, I'm a grown fucking man. Yeah. yeah. I don't play with toys. Mm-hmm. And, he, and it was so funny. All yeah. right. Uh, Last M- question. Uh, hold on. I got a couple ones here. I got a couple ones. MG Geek goes, you think it's time to overhaul WWE pay-per-views? They have had the same gimmick shows for years and it feels like the same. It's the same. Yeah. I think we need to get rid of that. I think we need to change the names. Mm-hmm. I think we need to. Get rid of gimmick pay-per-views and have gimmicks on pay-per-view to make them more important. Mm-hmm. Um, just shake it up a little bit. What do you think? I agree with that 100%. Okay. Like, I don't need to see, um, like, I think you can get rid of the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view and just add the Hell in a Cell to another, another pay-per-view. Extreme Rules is the only gimmicky one where I'm like, that's fine. You know? Yeah. Put Hell in a Cell on Extreme Rules. Um, Will Dwayne Gill make, a, uh, make it to the Hall of Fame? <sighs> Hall of Fame. Yes. Um, where are we here? Uh, I missed the question. Uh, yeah, uh, King Solis. My last question is: Do you think the Bullet Club is long overstayed? Kind of like NWO. No, I think if if they if they keep it tight like they are now, yeah, it's it's fine. Yeah. Bullet Club is it's, fine. It's not going to be the same Bullet Club that you know. Remember, we, we that was a really cool thing that we witnessed. It's still cool. The, the Bullet Club is single-handedly why white people started watching New Japan. <laughs> 30-year-old white nerdy guys got into New Japan. That is, that is exactly why. D- dude, I went into... I, I, I was, I, it was a resurgence for me. Yeah. I thought it was really cool, and I went back into it. I, 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 fo- I mean, you too, you mm. followed New Japan yeah. since you were a teenager. Yeah. And, and then the Bullet Club brought you back. All Japan to New ex- Japan, yeah. To some extent. So... Um, I think it's, it's funny. also it having sense. those, you know, Okada yeah. matches and Nakamura matches. I mean, they just had crazy, crazy mm, great matches. I love handsome Prince Devitt. Mm. <laughs> uh, Class of Champions, blah, blah, blah. Triple H did <laughs> not blah, blah, play blah. anything. He basically was just an interview. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I say bring War Games gimmick back. War Games is going to come to the main roster. Oh, that'd be awesome. And. Uh, what? Oh, I'd yeah. love that. That'd be cool. Sorry, guys. Couldn't say it. It was uh, potato talk. Potato talk. Uh, any, any, uh, anything else? Are we done? I think we're done. All right, boys and girls. Go to our website, gfknetwork.com. Subscribe to the podcast. We're everywhere podcasts are available. Everywhere. So go and subscribe. Subscribe right now. Yeah. I need those subs. Let's I do need it. those subs. I need those submarine sandwiches. I need those heroes. Uh, Patreon.com slash Mattman Podcast. Patreon.com slash Mattman Podcast. Go fund us there, and we'll see you all next week. Don't be Bye. eating those Subway potatoes. Don't eat a Subway potato.